Hi, this is Steve Hosher with Razor Gauge, and today I'm going to talk about how the various ways we can uh, download cut lists to the Razor Gauge software. So there are basically two screens for downloading cut lists. One is free, and the other one is an option that you pay for. The free one is the work order screen, and it's accessed by this button right here. So. The work order screen can work in either absolute mode or incremental mode. Uh, what that means is you can use it as either a stop or as a pusher. So I'm going to click the button and you can see here in the lower left corner I can switch between incremental mode and absolute mode. Uh, the screen changes just a little bit depending on which one that you choose because pushing is, involves a few different controls than using it as a stop. But mainly what I'm going to talk about today is not the workings of the screen, but more the, the construction of the cut list. So as you can see, this screen has these headings, line number, length, quantity, and then user 1 through 7. So the cut list has to be configured that way. The first column has to be line number, the second one length, the third one quantity, and the rest can be whatever you want. So I'm going to show you how to make one of those. Now you can do it in uh, Notepad or WordPad or Google Sheets or Star Office, but I'm using Excel. So this is a blank Excel worksheet. Now um, remember I said that the uh, first column has to be line number, then length, then quantity. So I'm going to go back to Excel and I'm going to put these headings in. Line number, length, quantity, quantity, and then I'm going to add some user feel, fields. Material, width, and I'll say thickness. So line number one, I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to make uh, 10 10 lines. You could have thousand, a thousand lines if you wanted, or more, ten thousand. Uh, there really isn't a, a practical limit. I'm sure there is a limit of some kind, but it would be larger than you'd ever use as far as the number of rows you can have in the cut list. So, um, and the number of cut lists you can create is basically unlimited too. It's limited only by the memory available not only on the hard drive on the razor gauge, but on the all the hard drives on your network because you could access these cut lists from all over your network. So it's basically the number of cut lists you can access are practical purposes unlimited. So I'm going to put a length of one or 12.5 uh, here and I'm just going to drag that down so we have something different on each line. I'll make three I'll drag this down, let it increment. The material I will say is oak. Make them all oak. Width, uh, I'll say 2.5. And thickness, I'll say, is 3 quarter. And I've noticed that when you do fractions in Excel, it wants to call it a date. So I'm going to change that to fraction. And then re-enter it. Okay, so there's my cut list. I'm going to save it as a CSV, or a, I'm going to save it as a, I'm going to save it as a CSV on the desktop and I'll just call it book one. Okay, now I'll go back here to the work order screen, click open work order and there's and there's my cut list. Now in work order screen you can't see the whole cut list once. You have to navigate by clicking next line previous line. When you get to a line that you want, you click move to position and then the race gauge will move to that position. If you're in incremental mode and have automatic features, 
then you can basically work through that cut list automatically and cycle the saw and do all kinds of more automated things. Um, just uh, as an aside, you know, you can see here when we're in uh, incremental mode that it shows saw curve and trim cut. So when you hit load to load a new part, you have to tell it the length of the part and the trim cut you want. And then it'll move out to the correct position. You load the part and it's going to trim a half inch. And uh, the kerf right now in this my software, I don't have kerf set, so it says kerf is zero. Of course, if you're pushing, you want to set that curve to an accurate number. So uh, that's how to create a, <coughs> a cut list for the work order screen. Now, the other screen is the auto list screen. Now, it's basically the same thing, except in auto list, the uh, order in which you put the columns is not doesn't matter because the auto list is mappable. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, work order screen and uh, I guess I don't need to close the file because it's not actually, the file itself isn't open. So I'm going to map the auto list for the file that I created for the work order screen. I think I may go into that screen, this file here, this book one. And I'm going to rearrange things, or let's see, just, I'll just take this, put it over here, delete that column, and I'll leave the rest of it the same. I'll, I'll change, I'll put length. put it there at the end. So we've changed it up just a little bit. And now I'll uh, save this as CSV and I'll call it auto list test on the desktop. And I'll close this. So now uh, I'm in the parts list processor portion of the auto list screen, how I got there. I, uh, went from the main screen to auto list, then settings, then uh, open PLP, and then I'm going to click map, and I changed the extension to CSV, and I'm going to open this test file, which is on my desktop, auto list test. Okay, so it's going to give me this error because the file I'm opening right now is different than the one that the software is currently mapped for. So I'm going, it, I'm going to ignore this error. That always happens when I'm starting a new cut list. So now I just need to map it. So line number is the first column. I'm not even going to use that because it's really not needed in auto list. Uh, quantity. I'm choosing quantity from the pull down menu. Material. Choose uh, material. Thickness, width, and length. So what I'm doing here is telling the Autolist software which columns are what. That's one of the big differences between Autolist and work order screen is that you, the format of the file can vary, it, and the uh, and the Autolist software can be adapted to work with just about any CSV file that's, that's uh, set up in tabular format. Tabular format means that each row has the same number of columns and, uh, and each, each row is basically formatted the same, meaning uh, length is in column 3 and quantity is in column 2. and It doesn't matter which column, it's just each row has to be the same throughout the whole list. Um, so I've mapped this, and now I'm going to save it, and now I'm going to click uh, Done. I did have headings, so I'm going to open this back up, 
and I am skipping the first line so it should read in there I'm not even gonna try it in the test mode go to the desktop okay so what it's telling me is that the thickness cannot be evaluated as a number um, that's because I entered thickness in as, as a fraction so it's not going to accept that file so I'm going to go back in here to parts list processor and map this again and I'm not going to call this thickness I'm going to call this uh, user field 1 because I really don't care if I have a so any, uh, user field 1 right now is defined as elevation so I'm going to choose elevation here and then I'm going to change user field 1 to uh, I'm just going to abbreviate and call it thickness this way and uh, now I'm going to save this mapping. So it's still labeled as thickness, but I'm not using the field that was set aside for thickness because that field, the thickness value has to be a, a, a decimal, a number like 0.75 instead of 3 quarter, the way I entered it as a fraction. So I just am using a user field to call, and I'm calling that thickness. And so now when I open this, should work. So there it is. There's the cut list. And then as far as how you operate auto list, that's another video. I mainly wanted to show the two ways that we can import cut lists into the uh, razor gauge software and touch on the differences between the two. If you have questions, give us a call. Uh, I appreciate you watching this video and uh, Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks a lot and have a great day.